My son turned one the other day, and I noticed he enjoyed playing with blocks. I decided to make him some blocks, and then that led to the idea of making a box for the blocks. Hence the title of this, Raiden's Block Box. A small project like this is a great way to make use of offcuts. For this box I used Avodire for the box sides, Ubinga for the top panel, Shadua for the bottom panel, and Bubinga for the blocks themselves. In the great debate with carcass dovetails, some are excited about whether they start with pins or they start with tails, or which the which is scribed from which. Um, I'm not a firm uh, believer on either side of that debate. In this case, I cut the tails first and I'm scribing the uh, pin board from those tails. Scribe marks were then transferred down uh, both faces of the board. Waste portions marked out, and in we go with a 30 tooth dozuki. Here I'm cutting the uh, sideline of the pin, uh, followed by a couple of uh, cuts in the kerf. I only cut on the one side in this pass, and once I've cut all of the left sides of the pins, I flip the board around and finish off the last cut on the right side. The purpose of the kerfing, uh, of course, is to make chopping an easier task. Here I'm dealing with the narrow end of the waste portions. They're five millimeters uh, in that gap, and I happen to have a chisel that's about that size, so it's convenient. And the chopping gives way to a mix of pairing and chopping. This pairing setup is definitely atypical and I wouldn't recommend it. However, due to the lighting situation um, and trying to place the camera in a place that would get a view of what was going on while allowing me to do the work led to this. Anyway, uh, it did the job. The board's been flipped around and I'm pairing the other side of each of those mortises getting down to the floor.
upper corners of the box lid have a mitered return and these I pair with the aid of a 45 degree pairing jig. Some steps were obviously omitted because now the box has been completed, glued up, and I'm trimming the ends of the pins and the ends of the tails flush to the surrounding surface. This next view we're looking at the milling machine table where I have the lid of the box uh, mounted upside down. Uh, a bubinga treatment has been applied along the lower edge of the box and this lipping is being decked maybe a hundredth of an inch with the mill to achieve a clean flat even surface. Stock for the blocks came from some curly bubinga uh, leg sections that had a layout mistake from another project. These were milled to a 2x2 two two, and then I cut them into blocks uh, and I ended up happily at a fairly consistent 2 inch dimension in all axes. This is how it goes together. My son's at an age where simply getting the lid of the box off is quite a challenge for him but uh, he does enjoy playing with those blocks and uh, I'm sure they'll serve him for many years to come. Some more close-in views of the box corners. Uh, I was happy with the way these dovetails came out. They're, they're not a, a joint I cut all that often and they seem to me pretty much to be a scribing exercise. So long as uh, your scribe from one board to another is cleanly done and you cut to those lines, you should get good results. Last view here is of the underside of the box lid. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for an upcoming video on the assembly of the Ming inspired cabinet.